Hi and welcome in the NoSQL series. In this tutorial, we will talk about Redis and Redis Sentinel. There is plenty of different Redis articles in the YouTube videos out there, but I wanted to share my experience as a developer by creating an all-in-one proper video covering the most essential and important stuff that is needed and helpful for developer or DevOps engineers to build highly available Redis cluster with Sentinel. In the first part of this tutorial, we'll talk about Redis and its use cases, who is using Redis in production, and Redis Sentinel. In the second part, we will install Redis using Docker and Docker Compose. We will see the most important commands, and also the slave master and Redis Sentinel configuration. So what is Redis? Redis, according to the official website, is an open source in-memory data structure used as a database, cache, and message broker that offers high-performance replication and then a unique data model. Features like replications, persistence, and client-side sharding allow Redis to scale from a convenient way to prototype a system all the way up to hundreds of gigabytes of data and millions of reads and writes per second. Redis is a type of database that is commonly referred as NoSQL or simply non-relational. In Redis, there is no tables and there is no database defined or enforced way to relate in data with other data in Redis. Redis can be used for a variety of things, including application configurations, session store, items stored in a shopping cart, HTML fragments or JSON fragments, queues or task scheduling, metro billing, social networking, gaming, and geohashing, etc., etc. It could be a really good question to ask, who is using Redis in production? Well, many tech giants and well-known companies are using Redis in their production. Twitter, for example, are using more than 10,000 instances in one of the most important servers, which is um, which is the timeline. Uh, we have also in the list GitHub, Pinterest, Snapchat, Craigslist, and Stack Overflow, and many, many, many others. You can check the full list in techstacks.io. Redis Sentinel is the high availability solution offered by Redis. In case of a failure in your Redis cluster, Sentinel will automatically detect the point of failure and bring back the cluster to stable mode without any human interaction. In a nutshell, Sentinel always checks the master and slave instances in the Redis cluster, checking whether they are working as expected or not. If Sentinel detects a failure in the master node, Sentinel will start a failover process. As a result, Sentinel will pick a slave instance and promote it as a master. And the other remaining slave instances will be automatically reconfigured to use the new master instance. One more important thing, and for the sake of clarity, the core room is the number of Sentinel that needs to agree about the fact that the master is not reachable. In order to really mark the master as failing and eventually start a failure process if possible. However, the quorum is only used to detect the failure. In order to actually perform a failover, one of the Sentinel needs to be elected leader for the failover and be authorized to proceed. This only happens with the vote of the majority of Sentinel processes. In this example, two nodes out of three must vote that there is an issue with the master node to perform a failover process. After installing Docker and Docker Compose, please open the terminal I will go inside my public folder and create a, a Redis folder. Inside the Redis folder, I create a docker-compose file, sorry, compose file, 
data.yml I will create a directory called data inside it I will put another folder called master and don't for, forget the minus p I will create also a master configuration conf right and I will open that in my text editor perfect I will get back to Google and look for a default configuration for Redis here it is I will copy paste it in my master that configuration and here there is three three important things the first one is the binding by default Redis is local but I will to um, to expose it to the public one more important thing is the up and only yes that should be yes and the up and f sync right I will get back now to the docker compose and create my first service I will use the version number 3 and I will create my first service the first service I will call it master so this master and the container name will be um, Redis, master, Redis master all right the image is the latest version I will use the latest version of Redis you can use any version you want for the ports I will expose the default one no need to to adjust that 3679 yep we'll use the default one command I will leave it empty for the moment I will get back to it in in seconds Boom. And for the volumes, I need to sync with a local um, with my local folder in here. I uh, will simply for the data, all the Redis data, I want it to be here inside data and master. So by default, the Redis data are stored in slash data and I want something else I want this config master to override the, um, the, the Redis configuration I will type master.conf I want it OTC sorry OTC Redis.conf perfect okay now I will get back to the command and I will ask Redis server to use this particular configuration and now we are all set let's get back to the terminal and type compose app oops seems like I forgot an S in services yep retype docker compose app and now it's good and now I, I will open a new terminal and type docker ps I can see clearly that my container is created I will try now to access it docker compose exec redis master and bash good now I am inside the container I will type redis cli and I am in for the comments info gives you all the details about Redis um, you can you can see about the replication CPU cluster memory and so on what interests us the most is info replication it's replication I can see clearly that my um, that's my Redis is a master and there is no slave connected 
keys. It's a command that we will use a lot in this tutorial. It simply display a list of the keys or the available keys depends on a regex. For now we use a star, we can use any type of regex that we like. And we will see that in few seconds. Set. Set is a key that will allow you to, to create a new record. For example, I can type first name and I will give it my first name. Okay. To get the value of my first name, simply type get and then the key name. And here it is. If I want to update the same record, simply type retype it again and write the new name. If you have a value that contains spaces or other characters, but it's better to use quotes or double quotes. Nice. Let's get the same key. And here it is. It's, it's updated. I will create another one using set command. I will call it last name. And I will put my last name. I will use keys with the regex of star to get all my to, to get all my keys. I can use like that to get all the keys that ends with a name. I can use something else like blah blah. It's a thing that I don't have right now. So there is said that there is the list is empty. I will display everything using a, using a star and use a command called exists. I will use email as example. Redis now returns zero. That means the email doesn't exist. I will try with last name and exists returns one. Expire. So expire is a command that will help you to delete a variable after a number of seconds for example first name after 10 seconds i will display the list of the variables i can see clearly that the first name exists after 10 seconds this variable will disappear there you go i will set that again first name i will set my name i will set another one called email and i will give it an example and test.com and I, want, uh, I will use expire again for this email to expire after 300 seconds ttl is a command that will help you to keep track of the seconds left for a variable now it's 293 now it's only 281 if you try to update it like Sufian at test.com you will see that the timing is set to minus one and minus ones mean that it won't expire simply because sets it's erase everything and starts from from scratch setx is a command that combine the two commands set and expire for example i can use a new variable called h I will set a expiration to 400 and the value of 31 or two, the same. Let's display the keys. Nice. Here is the H. Let's type now the TTL of H. So it will uh, expire after 389, right? set in x or simply set if not exists have two functionalities first if the key doesn't exist it will create it and if this variable exists it won't be able to update it for example the first name exists already so i won't be able to update it to blah 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 i will get the value of value of first name you see it's still Sufian and it's not blah blah. I will create a new variable using the exact same command. It's called 
year of birth and I will set it to this number and if we get the list of the variables we will see that this variable has been created if I get the year of birth you will see that is set to 1989 if we try now to re-update it using in a set nx won't be able to change its value of birth let's say 2000 i will get its value so it's not updated so it's in set nx so set if not uh, exists it's a good command if you want if you don't want to uh, update your 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 keys ENCR or stands for increment it increments a numbers for example we have the age I will try to increment the age it was 32 and now it's 33 if you increment it again it will be uh, 34 if you use increment by For example, I will put a hundred. You see now that the age is incremented by a hundred. If I do it again, now it's two hundred and three hundred. You can use minus minus numbers, and you will see that it decremented. Decrement is a command that helps you to decrement a variable or a number. And decrement by is a command also um, that you can use to decrement by a different number than one age decrement by 200 right so the age is 30 I will create a new variable I will call it for name and I will give it only my first name append is a command that will help you to append a string to another string i will use the same variable for name to append sufian or my first name with my last name if i get the full name value we will see that it's append Right, so we saw that get can help us to get any key that or the value of any key that we want, but we can't combine multiple uh, multiple keys. Multiple get or mget help you to do this. You can use first name and last name all in the same query, and the order is respected. If you can get multiple values you can also set multiple values I can say key 1 and the value is val1 and key 2 and the value is val2 let's display the list and there you go here's key 1 and here's key, key 2 let's get them both good to delete a variable or a key type del and del you can use one or multiple variables hashes so hashes are a bit different from strings uh, for me they are more important I use them really a lot in my in my projects in my company and to use the hashes simply simply type H for for hashes and then a set the key I will use user one as a key and the field I will use first name and the value is my name I will redo it once again. I will instead use the last name. And here is my last name. Email. And then 
tests.com. I will create another hash for user number two. First name is Bob. First name, sorry. It's first name like this. First name is Bob. Last name is, I don't know. And the age, I suppose it's 20. Okay, let's browse the list of the variables. I have user one and user two. Um, get won't help us because get it's for strings and now we are using hashes. To get a hash, uh, simply use hget and the name of the field. I will display only the first name. Okay. To display multiple, to display multiple fields, simply type hmget or multiple gets, and now you can grab the last name also and the email. Right. I will do that with user number two. Sorry. Um, get user number two. And they will ask for last name and email. There you go. Uh, the the email doesn't exist in the user two. I used only the uh, the age, if I remember correctly. H get all will get uh, will help you to get all the fields of our key. For example, user two, and they will give you and that will give you the and the field name and its value just like that I, I will get now the user number one and there you go hm set will help you to create uh, multiple fields instead of doing it multiple times you can try with user number three so first number first name will be let's say Alice last name will be i don't know and the age i don't know she didn't tell me okay let's get everything from user three and there you go first name is alice last name is i don't know and the age is she didn't tell me each set you can use it again to update any value i will update the age of user 3 i will use the age updated to 25 finish that's good it's updated now i can increment a alice age it's user 3 and the age is the field that i want to increment and i want to increment it by one h increment by user number three it's alice and i will increment it by one so it was 25 now it's 26 if i increment by 10 and now she's older now she's 36 now you can increment it by a minus two and now she's 26 sets s add is a command that will help you to add a member to a list it's similar to arrays but are a bit different i will say um, the um, the list name is color and i will add the blue okay and now i will add blue red green and yellow right s members a command that will help you the, to get all the elements from or members from this set now we can see that the blue yellow and green even though i've set it twice so we can see only one s card give you the count of this set 
it's 4 and s is member help you uh, to find if a um, if a member uh, exists or not for example colors let's check the black if exists or not it's zero now we we'll try with red red exists so this returns one if you want to delete a member simply type s s rem or remove s remove i will remove the yellow and i will display everything using s members and the key is colors we can see now that the yellow is, uh, is disappeared Ordered sets are a, best, uh, are a bit different from, uh, from normal sets or sets. These are with the Z, so it's a Z add, name my variable teams. And the, um, the, uh, the number one is, let's say, of the teams. Okay, it's for example, if um, Barcelona. And my second one is Real Madrid. Okay, and number three for me is PSG or Paris Saint Germain. Okay, to browse the list of my ordered sets, I will type Z range. The key is team, and I will browse from the zero to one. I can see that um, uh, uh, FC Barcelona and Real Madrid. If you type zero, 00, it will give me the first value and then the second value and then uh, the third value. You can type zero minus one to get all the values. And there is a, um, a good command also. It's called with scores. It will help you to display the member and its, um, and its score also. Right. Right. To remove a member, simply write ZRAM and from team I will remove PSG. We display everything now with the score, so we still have Barcelona and Real Madrid. Pub sub. So subscribe. It will help me to subscribe to a channel. Uh, the channel that I will subscribe for, I will call it chat. And I will keep it listening. I will get back to my previous, uh, to my pr previous terminal. And I will publish a something on the channel. I will use the exact same channel uh, that's called chat. And I will write, hi, I am here. Okay get back to the previous all to the subscriber I can see my 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 message okay I was published something else so in the chat also I am on the are you there right let's get back to the subscriber and I can see clearly that my message is received now I will close the connection and I will push the exact same message. Now, Redis told me that the message didn't uh, didn't receive. Okay, so it's kind of uh, display is zero here. So, uh, if the message successes, then Redis returns one. If not, if it returns zero, uh, we can try with, for example, let's say another channel called notifications. Okay, so if there is no subscriber, so Redis would return zero. So there is a pub sub or publish subscribe. It's a really good, good feature uh, that can help you do the queuing. It's really, it's really fast, and many companies use this. I personally don't use it. I use RabbitMQ and Kafka. It depends on the project that we are working on. But some companies like very much uh, Redis queuing, and I think it's it's gonna be helpful for you to know it.
We this also support transactions. It starts with multi. It's to multi. It's to multiple commands to start a transaction. Now I can set a new variable. Um, okay, user one email. Okay, I will use key one. Value is val one. It's something that it doesn't exist in here. So it's queued. Uh, I will create another one. Val two. It's queued two. To commit, simply type exec. And today, uh, uh, let's this let's display all the, the the list of the keys. I can see that key one and two are are inserted. I will start a transaction again with multi, and now I will delete key one and key two. And this time, I will type this card. Okay, I will display the list of the variables. I can see clearly that my keys are preserved just because just because I rolled back my changes. Now if I delete them and commit key one, key two, and commit using exec, I will see that key one and key two uh, and key two they no longer exist in my database. For the connection, we need to update the configuration. I will get back to the master.conf uh, and I will look for require pass. Here it is. It's commented. I will remove the command and I will use a password, simple one, and I will reboot my, my Redis. Nice. I'll get back to read this li. Good. So now I, uh, I will try now to browse all the keys. And tada! There is a authentication process uh, before I get anything from the database. I will try to get the key one, for example, and I will get the exact same message. To authenticate, you um, should a uh, use auth. And here you can type your password. I will set it wrong. And here is the message for wrong passwords. If I use the, the right password, and you can see there is OK. And now if I type key star, now I can see all, everything. I will remove the password and reboot again. Good. Let's start from scratch and there it is. Salai. And now the password is removed. There is also a good command that you need to know is ping. It's a good command to see if um, Redis is up and running or not. There's also a select command. Uh, normally or by default, Redis store all the uh, all your keys in a database called zero. Let's check that. We are in database called zero. If we change that to the database number one and type keys star, you won't find anything. By default, Redis have 16 database. You can pick in one you like. So this is all you need to know about uh, Redis commands. Uh, if you know about strings, hashes, uh, lists, sets, or ordered sets, then you are ready to go to start a project. And now we will see how to, to create a slave. I will duplicate this block. We will reuse it. And I will call it user slave the same for the name okay i will create a new config file i will call it slave.conf 
and the data will be I need it to be synced inside a slave um, a slave folder okay uh, let me create that I create a new one okay inside data and let's create the slave folder good so the slave now is using data slash slave and let's duplicate that and normally the configuration should be the same except for one thing it's the replica of here it is in line 286 i will remove the commands and the ip address i would use the uh, container name instead it's redis master and the port is the by default one uh, it's 63.79 and that's all we need i will double check the configuration the name is correct Oh, the host is correct the name is correct port is correct redis config volumes it's slave and the configuration is the slave right okay i will relaunch it again okay what's wrong with that driver connection slave build on this point Mm -hmm. and this port yes this is correct i forgot about that i will use the port number 18 instead i will redo it again and yeah it worked okay i will remove that and that will go also and start from scratch now i will connect to the master redis cli and display the info replication remember that okay it says that this is the master and there is a slave connected i will now enter the the slave one and use the sali info replication and it says that this one is a slave and the master is the ma redis master okay if you are using an ip address then the ip address be, you will see it in here there is one thing which is really good if you type keys star you will find the exact same database that you have in master and they are in a complete sync let's demonstrate that even more i will delete the year of birth birth it's written like this and the full name good let's display the list again and you will see that it's instantly disappeared see so yeah, they are in complete sync one thing about the slave is that you cannot set anything let's say I'll set my first and my last name the the, sl the slaves in redis are uh, read only you can only read from replicas and you cannot uh, write on the replicas you, only, you can only write on the master you can also read from the master and from the slave you can only read i will set a new variable for the L. let's browse the keys uh, here it is here it is Sufian now let's get it and here it is they are in the complete oh sorry sorry and the, we are good about the replication so now I will add sentinel I will create I will call it redis sentinel container name 
going to be the same. I like to call it the same. Sentinel set for the image. Image. I will use also with this. Um, I remember correctly that there is an image only for that, which is much lighter. But I will keep using Redis. It's not. It's not a blocker. For the command, I will leave it empty as usual and start with the volumes. For the volumes, I need a config file uh, that I will call sentinel.conf and I want it uh, dot, and I want it to be on etc uh, sentinel.conf. This configuration um, is not yet available. I will add it right now. Here it is. And now I will Google it to get the default um, the default Sentinel configuration. Here it is. I will copy past it too. And here it is. Now I can past it and to adjust the variables. Okay, so the most important thing is the um, it's line monitor something. Yeah, it's monitor uh, monitor my master, and I will give it now the master um, master IP or name. Here it is. This is the corium. I don't know how to pronounce that, but it's corium. Yeah. Uh, the Corium, since we are building only one Sentinel, uh, the vote should be only by by one machine. Or Redis recommends using three Sentinels in parallel or in the same time. But for this tutorial, we will use only one cent Sentinel instance. And of course, um, the uh, the number of votes I need only one machine to vote for me. So for the down after milliseconds. For this tutorial, I will use only three seconds. One thing, uh, yeah, but I'll think I will keep only one. I want it because I have only one, one slave. The failover only three seconds. That's all I need in this um, in this configuration. And for the command, use Redis uh, server. And I will ask it to use etc sentinel.conf and flag sentinel. And I will add depends on first on the Redis master and Redis slave. Good. Good. Let's access the master with the cell line and check the replication. Yes, there is a master and there is one slave. Let's access the slave now. With this cell line, type info replication. Replication, sorry. And there is a slave and the master is this one. Okay. What I will do now, so this is the master and this is the slave. I will create another, uh, I will open another terminal and I will kill the master intentionally. So sentinel master is the second one. I will copy that and will type docker stop and I will kill that intentionally. So let's check that. I have only the sentinel and slave. I will retype info replication and now it's jump from slave to a master and there is no slave connected just because like it swapped the roles the slave became the master and I have no access to the slave right 
what I will check, what I will do, I will check the, the database. I still have everything okay. I will add couple, couple values. Value, sorry, value one and two and three. Okay, let's check the list. Okay, here is number two, here is number one and number, okay. What I will do now, I will start my machine or master machine and let's see what's gonna happen. I will start now the Redis master or the old master. Uh, let's check that using Docker PS. I have now my master and slave. This is only names that are, we give to, to the machines. If now I access the master and display the, uh, sorry, Redis Ally, and display the info replications or the replications info, this master or the old master become a slave, right? If I type keys, I will find that here is key two, key three, and key one. So your, your business still keep uh, up and running uh, without any issues. So Sentinel did the job. It's true that it's not recommended to use one. Uh, we should use three, but yeah, it's working. And that's thanks to the Sentinel that handles this failover for us. So that was it. Uh, that's all you need to know about Redis. We saw together the most important commands like strings ones, hashes, transactions, and publish and subscribe. We saw how to configure master, slave, and sentinel. We experimented the high availability and failover together. And please don't forget to like and subscribe if you like my videos. Thank you.